Hi, I'm Nat Colton with uh, Kentucky State University's land grant program and extension program out of Frankfort, Kentucky. And today we're going to talk about uh, rainwater capture systems and we're actually going to construct one from start to finish. There are a lot of really great resources out there, extension publications from our partner institution, the University of Kentucky. They talk about design considerations and walk you through um, how to capture rainwater and how to use it. But uh, personally, I think it's helpful to, to see somebody do it myself. And so we decided to make this video as a digital resource for folks that want to see somebody implement um, some rainwater capture. And I'll emphasize that this is just a system and designs can be different uh, based on site specific needs. But there are a variety of reasons that you might want to capture rainwater. Um, some of the more obvious ones are using it for watering your garden or watering livestock. Um, but it's also sometimes helpful to capture rainwater just to serve as a buffer for that water as it, it flows downstream and to mitigate stormwater uh, flow on your landscape, wherever that may be. Um, another reason, another valuable reason to utilize rainwater for irrigation, particularly in urban landscapes, is because most people's water bills um, impact their sewer bills. They, the sewer company uses the water bill to calculate how much you pay for sewage fees, assuming that that water is going into the sanitary sewer system. So if you capture rainwater and use it as irrigation, you can save money as well. So today we're going to take you from the very start to the very finish of a rainwater capture system. And we're here at the Josephine Sculpture Park in Frankfort, Kentucky at their uh, event barn, which is pretty representative of a lot of barns in the state uh, that used to house tobacco. And as you can see behind me, there's already a gutter and downspout. So we're just going to tie right into what's already here um, as far as that's concerned. But we'll, later in this video, we'll talk about some considerations uh, when you are putting on new gutters and new downspouts, um, if, if that's not something that you already have in place. So let's get to it. So the first step in getting your site prepped for your rainwater collection system, I've already done part of the first step, but um, is to get rid of some of the sod that's, uh, or whatever the whatever the surface is where you're gonna put your tank, you wanna roughly level that out. In this case, I use this flat bladed shovel to skim off the sod, get it roughly level. I outlined the footprint of the tank that we're gonna be using, which is a 275 gallon IBC tote. It's a really common tank used to ship a variety of liquids. Um, it's good to make sure that you're getting a food grade one if you're getting one that's used. And um, so, so roughly level that and then get geotextile fabric to put down over that footprint before you put gravel down because we're going we're gonna to level it a little more precisely later. But um, this geotextile fabric serves as a barrier between the soil and the rock so that as we get freezing and thawing cycles in the winter, the rock doesn't get sucked into the to the mud and, and it, it could become a mess especially with all that weight of the, the big tank full of water on top of it um, and so we put the the blocks around the perimeter to hold the gravel in from the force of the rain over time some of that gravel would probably have washed away and then put rebar stakes to hold the we drove rebar stakes with a hammer through the blocks to hold the blocks in place um, if, if for some reason they, they started to shift. Because although the, the gutters and downspout will catch most of the water, there's still rainfall that has force that little by little is going to move um, those pieces of gravel. In this case we're using uh, 57s and so, so the blocks forming that perimeter keep the gravel in place and we drove some stakes, rebar stakes through those pieces of block so that those also are, are held and stake in place pretty well. We added sand and a little bit, we just had a couple stray bags of sand and I thought it was worth using a little bit of sand so that we could compact it a little bit with the tamper. Um, and that made it a little bit easier to level rather than the, the gravel that's larger, they're larger pieces. Um, 
And so if you have a finer material, it's easier to get a level surface. So we're using some blocks. These are just blocks that happen to be on site. Um, it's convenient, but we're using putting blocks underneath it rather than just putting the tank right on the gravel so that the tank is a little more elevated and it makes it more convenient for somebody to use the waters they're dispensing it in this case they're going to use water from the tank to wipe down tables and um, clean with and things like that in the barn since this is a uh, an event program educational programming space at the josephine sculpture park in frankfort kentucky but another thing that's worth noting is is that these these blocks don't have to be perfectly level it's nice if we can get them fairly level and it's nice if the tank can tip to the front just a little bit so that when you go to drain it you'll get most everything out of it but um, it's it's worth keeping in mind that water weighs a little bit over eight pounds per gallon and so this 275 gallon tank once it's full is going to weigh up over 2,000 pounds so those blocks will settle in and uh, it won't go anywhere once it's full of water so I've pre-cut all of my materials, but I want to highlight before I start assembling things for you to look at um, that it's, it's often really helpful and I think it's really important for myself to sketch things out before I build them, but especially for specking out materials for any sort of project, um, it's really helpful to, to spec it out on paper with a sketch and put all the different fittings and dimensions of different piping and stuff like that in there so you don't end up over buying lots of stuff you don't have to make 15 trips to Lowe's but also you can you can a lot of times catch uh, mistakes before you you start putting stuff together so I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and start dry fitting things together or well I've already dry fit the pieces together and that's part of why I've already cut them um, but I'll go ahead and start assembling it so you can see that process. So I'm first going to assemble the pieces for the first flush diverter. And this first flush diverter is just a, a larger diameter pipe. In this case, I'm using a 4-inch diameter PVC pipe that will extend vertically in line with the existing downspout. And the, the idea of this is that it'll catch a lot of the solid debris that's on a roof. This isn't too big of an issue here because in this location we don't have a lot of trees over the roof, but it's still nice to flush um, any solids that are on the roof, for example, tree debris, leaves, uh, and sticks. We'll go down this tube first, and as the water fills up, most of the solid stuff will already be in this tube, and then the rest of the water after the solids have been flushed off the roof will be directed into the tank. And there are lots of different designs and ways to achieve the same thing. Um, we'll reference those a bunch of different University of Kentucky Extension publications in the video description because um, there are a few different ways to, to deal with filtering or diverting debris from your rainwater catchment system. this case I got a little bit fancy you don't really have to do it this fancy but I think it's really handy these large diameter ball, ball valves are pretty expensive um, but it's really handy to rather than use it on like a screw in plug on the end of your four inch diameter pipe or whatever your first flush diameter pipe is um, it's really handy to be able to just open a ball valve to drain that because when your first flush diverter fills up it doesn't do you any good if it's full of water the next time you have a rain event so you do have to, there's a little bit of maintenance in this system in that you have to drain that first flush diverter in between large rain events um, so that it so that it is so it serves its purpose as a diverter and 
and has volume to capture that first flush of water. And I'm actually not, I'm not gonna glue this fitting. I'll come back and glue it because the uh, organization where we're doing this wants this painted black so it looks nice with their pretty black barn. So I'm gonna not glue these fittings on the end of the Y connector here because I wanna be able to take it back off and spray paint it black for them. Uh, but it's worth noting that the, the Y, the y uh, connector here is what's coming off of our downspout. They do make adapters um, and I made, even though I sketched out this design, I still made the mistake and ordered the wrong size adapter to go from the three inch by four inch downspout to four inch PVC. But they do make uh, three inch by four inch adapters. It's more common to see three or two by three. Um, and so what I did, this is fine. It doesn't look quite as clean, but I just used a couple self-tapping screws through the PVC Y adapter into the downspout and then I'll backfill those holes with 100% uh, silicone caulk just to make sure you aren't getting mosquitoes or debris down into your, your system. And you can fasten the, you can fasten your, your pipe to your structure a lot of different ways. Uh, this was a, a convenient way for me to do it with a black material that'll blend into their their structure. Um, so I just bought some metal strapping with holes. And I'm just gonna put one on for now. I'll come back and put the rest of the straps on. Okay. So I have my initial, I actually marked this circle with my 90 degree elbow, um, which is a larger diameter than the pipe actually is, so I'm going to trace a new hole that's more accurately sized, but still centered. And I'm going to take my drill. about making it perfect because it won't be and uh, we're gonna come back and put silicone around it to seal it up seal it up anyway So here I'm just using a knife, a uh, little um, X-Acto knife to uh, cut that because I got to be able to get that blade in. I hadn't really thought about that.
once we get it started a jigsaw would actually be better because the blade's smaller you could fit it in there real easy I don't have one with me there are going to be little pieces of plastic in there from me cutting on this so it's probably worth flushing that out it fills with water so and this is not going to be used to irrigate any vegetable crops or food or water livestock so we're not real worried about contamination but of course that's something to consider if if you're going to be using the water for um, animal consumption or, or using it to irrigate vegetable crops um, because of course that is one of the good reasons to capture rainwater is that we can use it to fulfill irrigation needs. I left this one little downspout going into the tank. I cut it so it went in there a little bit. Um, I think that'll just give it a little more stability, but um, I don't think there's any sense in taking it, taking the piece all the way to the bottom, but it, you want a little bit in there so that it, it gives it some stability because this will rest over top of the hole, the adapter, the 90 degree elbow is wider, it'll rest on the top of the hole, whereas that three inch pipe actually goes through the hole. And this video is by no means meant to be uh, an authority on how to install a rainwater catchment system with a 275 gallon IBC tote. It is just a way that I have done it and um, pulls from principles that can be used to capture rainwater, to use them for whatever management objectives you may have on your property, whether that's in a rural or urban setting. As you can scale this up, as you can see in um, some of the links in the, dis or the description of this video, places like uh, Eden Shale Farm, the UK has published um, extension bulletins with information on how to use thousand plus gallon tanks to capture rainwater to irrigate livestock. But um, you can also do this, as you can see in another UK bulletin, uh, with a 55 gallon drum. So there are lots of different scales. This is kind of middle of the road scale, I guess. And 275 gallons is still a decent capacity to do something with, but it's not cost prohibitive for most people because these are so readily available. Okay, and like I said, I'm going to just dry fit this last part because I'm going to take all this down to spray paint it black to fit the, the color scheme of this art building. But that's fit together how it's going to be. Um, your first flush diverge over here on the left. And again, we've got a ball valve on it so that you can conveniently drain it conveniently open it up and let it empty out and then close it once you've emptied that diverter tube um, once this is all fit up and in its permanent location you do want to make sure that this is still sloping downward so that you don't have when I tug back on this, it creates a low point here, and I don't know. It, maybe that's not a big deal, but it, I'd, I'd prefer not to have stagnant water in pipes, if at all possible. So we've come over to the other side to install the overflow spout. So, so we picked a spot that's roughly, you know, toward the top, wherever you want your your high level on your tank to be. We're not gonna leave water in this in the winter, so it's not like we have to have expansion capacity for when the water freezes, so it's pretty high up. Um, same thing, I just used, in this case, it's two inch pipe, traced a circle, 
and I'll drill some pilot holes and then cut out the cut out my stencil. Again, I'm going to use my knife to get it started. And actually, the sidewall is so much thinner, I'm just going to use the knife the whole time. Because that's a lot easier and calmer than using a reciprocating saw. The jigsaw would be a lot better uh, than the reciprocating saw for cutting this plastic, like I mentioned. I just have the reciprocating saw because I was using it for cutting the PVC. But, of course, there are lots of different ways to cut PVC, too. I always like to encourage people not to be afraid to try things and don't don't take something I'm doing or anything, well, most things we do with cooperative extension as um, gospel. You know, it's just demonstrating practices based on principles. It's the principles that is important. Uh, we want to focus on using good management principles that are research-based. All right, that's a nice snug fit. like before we've pre-measured and pre-cut so we're just slapping stuff together and I'm gonna pull this out later too and spray paint it black and we'll get some shots of the completed system so you can see how pretty and black and matching everything is oh I don't measure so good And again, we'll come back and put some silicone on that um, joint there where it meets, where it penetrates the tank. Um, and it's not totally necessary. That'll probably stay just fine, but I'm probably going to come back and attach it to this cage somehow just so it's not swinging around loosey-goosey because they're probably going to use a garden hose with this, uh, which is a three quarter inch diameter fitting. Um, we went ahead and got an adapter from the IBC uh, fitting here on the tank. And there are a handful of different sizes that they put on these IBC totes, depending on what they're using them for. You can find that information online. I don't, this is called an S60, BUT, and I'm, I don't think it's a butcher's fitting, but um, anyway, you can you can find that information. I'll put it in the description for the video where you can find the different fittings on these IBC totes. But uh, this is just for convenience, so that they can use this with a garden hose if they want to in the future. And in most cases, you're probably going to be using some other kind of fitting as opposed to what's on there. But again, you've got a ball valve on the drain for the tank, so you can open and close it. But that is pretty much it. 
So we'll come back, I'll take these pieces out, spray paint them black, make it look pretty, and then put the rest of the strapping on there just like you saw me do on that uh, first flush diverter. Nothing super fancy, it's just strapping, screws into the siding of your structure. Um, lots of different ways you can do that, but that's how I chose to do it on this system. Uh, but we do want to make sure that it's secure so that as wind's blowing and uh, things move that we we don't have too much movement. We don't have it falling apart. Oh, one more thing. You'll see this in the final video or the, the image of the completed system. I'm not going to put it on right now, but for aesthetic reasons, but also to prevent um, UV from getting into the tank and promoting algal growth in, in your water. We've bought a, uh, a black cover. There are lots of different options on Amazon and different places, but essentially they, they sell these covers specifically for IBC totes because a lot of people are using them to store water in for irrigating crops or gardens or livestock uh, but you don't want algal growth in there for a variety of reasons but if you put one of these uv treated covers on it that prevents the sun from getting in and um, and allowing that algae to grow you can also another way to prevent that depending on what you're using the water for you can put chlorine tablets in the tank uh, to prevent algal growth but in this case it really makes sense to put a black cover over it because our barn's black and it looks nice